Right, you t you do the ending then. Tell me uh, it, it, the the spinning oh, top. Does it stop? Question. Well, Michael Caine came out fairly recently. I, I want to say the past. When I say fairly recently, maybe the past five years or so. And people feel he spilt the beans on whether or not the top stops spinning. It's, it's like one of the big ambiguous questions of our time, right? Is he actually in a dream or does Cobb just realise now he just wants to see the face of his children? He doesn't care any longer whether he's in the dream or not. He doesn't. He still felt Mole was wrong and... This world is the real world. He's there with his kids. He's back in America. He's finally content. Or is he? Now, Michael Caine says, yes, he is in the real world. Because as far as he was aware, from his perspective and from the scripts and everything that he'd read, is that Michael Caine's character only ever appears in the real world. He doesn't appear in any layers of dreams whatsoever. Doesn't do it. Um, and he is... He, his character is as much a constant as the spinning top is. Uh, You're right. However, I feel that Nolan himself, even if you pressed him on it, probably doesn't have an answer for you. Because I, I reckon it's, I reckon it's purposefully ambiguous because it's essentially part of this whole film is exploring. Again, what is reality? Is reality just what our mind accepts or what our minds want to accept? Do we lean into certain things for, you know, how our brains work against us? Our, you know, our mole, mal, whatever. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's mole, isn't it? Yeah. I've uh, been calling them mole. Yeah. She is almost like, you know, like we, we talk about the kind of the, um, well, you know, like the NPCs within the dreams, how they're almost like at like red blood, the white blood cells. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, infections kind of thing. It's, it, it's all about what our brains will allow us to accept and what they will or they won't. Um, there are certain truths, right? You know, there's, there's often, there's a big and complex discussion as to whether we can ever fundamentally change who we are as people. Link later was talking about this quite a lot with the Hitman and everything like that. Um, the, the you know the film he released quite recently, and I think that's all part of what Nolan is kind of exploring here. Can Cobb ever really check? Can Cobb ever get rid of that mind worm that Mole might be alive somewhere? That this guilt that is consuming him, this doubt that is consuming him that is having such a massive impact on the people around him because he can't let it go. He can't let go of this thought that he might be wrong, that he might be wrong. As much as he wants to deny it, as much as he, in his active brain, he's like, no, my wife was deranged. The dreams broke her. She committed suicide. There's that little bit of him that's like, she could still be alive somewhere and I've left her. I've left her and that guilt is consuming me, but also the fear that I might be missing out on my life with her is consuming me, right? However, part of that is also, can we ever get over these thoughts? Can we ever let go of these intrusive thoughts? And I think Nolan's kind of showing you that's part of Cobb's emotional journey, that he has learned to let go of Mole. And finally, the trade-off is he can now see his children's faces again. And that's what he's found comfort in. It almost doesn't matter if he's dreaming or not, because to him, he's not, and that's fine. You know. Yeah. So I, I'm Michael Caine, but that's that 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 is to do with me needing the yeah. ending. I need yeah. it because the film was so intense. When the it ends with that final sort of it's, it's, the strings are going and it's like the ending of the song time isn't it but it's like a very light version of it and the top's like spinning that feeling as it ends i'm like Ugh. do you remember that because i'm getting goosebumps thinking about it now do you remember watching this in the cinema because yeah. i remember when it cuts to black 
people shrieking. Yeah. People being I, like, no, no, like, show us. Do you know what I mean? so like, angry at the yeah. time. I was like, give me, because I've been so invested in it yeah. the entire time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I think possibly I've seen somewhere Nolan saying that the the spinning top topples over. I think in the deep dark recesses of the internet, somewhere someone's managed to find him, or uh, like someone's managed to sort of pincer him on the spinning top. And I think possibly he said it does topple. Just to Google. Uh, Nolan has spoken about the ending in interviews but he's never definitively revealed whether the top falls instead he has always emphasised that uncertainty is the point of the film Nolan, you, Chris. <laughs> Nolan has explained that the film is meant to leave the audience questioning the nature of reality and Cobb's state of mind in a 2015 interview at a Princeton University commencement speech, Nolan mentioned that for Cobb, the significance of the top becomes irrelevant at the end of the film because he is no longer focused on distinguishing reality from dreams. He's focused on being with his children. This suggests that the emotional resolution for Cobb is more important than the literal answer. Oh, so, there you go. Christopher! Oh, no. I was right. <laughs> this 